one wonders how far down we, we have sunk as humans when, when masses of people are so dumbed down, Eustace. You talked about it in, in, in other shows we've done together. What have they done to make us all dumb as fence posts? Well, they, they, they locked up the only intelligent man in the United States who was Esther Pound, and they put him in an insane asylum. And then they let everybody know that if you say talk any sense to anybody, then we're going to put you in the insane asylum. In fact, Jack Hoover uh, issued orders in 1959 that I be committed to a mental institution. And, of course, everybody ignored him because he had no such power. Well, how about, you know, how about the use of drugs and chemicals in our in our water and uh, and, and and the rest of it? Oh, that's omnipresent. They use that all the time. In fact, the godfather of modern military science was uh, uh, James, uh, uh, the president of Harvard. Uh, James, I've, I've written about him in my book. And... Uh, he became a gallbladder of Germany after we invaded Germany. Now he he knew about what using chemicals to, uh, to that control was mass population. He, was he is the one who was commissioned by Winston Churchill in 1942 to put together an anthrax bomb, which would exterminate everybody in Europe. And uh, that was his job, and he did it. But they who, who are those two Jewish brothers at the Rockefeller Institute in New York? That designed a lot of stuff. They they came in after this polio vaccine, and they were they were instrumental in 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 uh, getting a lot of grant money to uh, f do research on mass population uh, uh, elimination and stuff. Two brothers, I forget their name. I, well, there I have three, to... three Jewish brothers. I can't think of the names at the moment, but uh, they were employees of Rockefeller. Yes, one of them That's was right. the head of the Rockefeller Institute of Medical Research, and That's the other right. two helped get revolutionized the uh, uh, medical care industry in the United States. That's right. And they were instrumental also in saying, uh, uh, suppressing evidence that fluoride in water was poison. And, and instead of doing uh, re regular science on that stuff, they used junk science to say that it was good for teeth, didn't they? Oh, yes. They, they, they said it would absolutely eliminate limit activities. And, of course, every parent of children, as, as the children get to adolescence, they all have cavities. Uh, and so these people came along and said, we'll, uh, we'll relieve mankind of this problem forever. That was the promise that they held out. And, of course, it was totally useless. And there was never to this day, I had I quoted one congressman in my book, Murder by Injection. Uh, he looked into it, and they found that there was no evidence for any of this stuff. So he went after them. The next thing, he was a congressman from Kansas. And the next thing you know, he was out of Congress. <laughs> he, was a, he was a civilian uh Looking for a job. Well, oh, yeah. it, it, see, it, well, they don't end at the fluoride either, do they? I mean, look what they're doing with these other drugs. Well, they're doing it. They've got so many that you can't, you can't keep up with them. They're working all the time. The Rockefeller Group, uh, I, I uh, joked uh, years ago that uh, all of the drugs that uh, the Rockefeller Group was uh, uh, producing were based on petroleum. And I said the human system was never intended to, to run on petroleum. Yeah, yeah. Well, this this uh, it's interesting that Prozac, I believe, and, and maybe somebody out in the listening audience can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, has a base of uh, of several chemicals. One of them, including formaldehyde, and also uh, there is some fluoride in there as a stabilizing agent inside of uh, Prozac, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, they've got those stabilizers and everything. It's usually mercury or it's a derivative. And uh, that, that's what that really does the damage, because when you get mercury into the system, you can't get it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so basically, they've given us a cocktail of lies in our press and, and in our entertainment. They've, they've dumbed us down with drugs and chemicals. They've fattened us up with, uh, with hormones and, and hormone-laced milk. They've destroyed our immune system with uh, antibiotics in the, in the beef supply by giving it to, to beef cattle and to cows. And uh, basically, so we're just sitting ducks for the end here, it seems like. Oh, we are, because the American Medical Association, you know, I, I went to the Library of Congress in 1950 uh, to look up whatever uh, historical research there was on the American Medical Association. I found out that the Library of Congress had none. That's why I wrote my book, Murder by Injection. Because all these years that the AMA had been the most powerful lobby in Washington, there was never any book written about them. 
They operate mm-hmm. in total secrecy. And how much how much control is, does the, the the AMA have from Zionism and Zionist control? Well, the, uh, Fishbein was ahead of it for many years. You know, he ran the whole show, Morris Fishbein, and he himself had no medical training. He was he was strictly a Jewish entrepreneur that uh, did it all hot spa. He went to medical school in uh, Chicago briefly, and they flunked him out. And the rest of his life, he's he uh, spent uh, pretending to be uh, posing as a uh, med- uh, doctor. <laughs> and he, wow! And he, he became head of the AMA, and he ran it as a one-man dictatorship. Well, you know, it's interesting, Eustace, when you get outside the United States, you start understanding that, well, here in France, for example, if you go to a pharmacy, um, most of the choices you have are between homeopathic cures, cures that are are natural-based, whether it be herbs or whatever, and they have a whole section of it. And they also have cures that are are more um, Western-based medicine, but the doctors here are trained to use both. And they, it's amazing that in America, it's usually the most up-to-date poison that oh, yeah. they find. The and latest it, thing off of the production lines. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, they're like a carnival barkers because everything they put out, they say, it cures everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the other side of it is, you know, they're getting people on these cholesterol drugs, and oh, and right. I just read it. I just read this article about there's no evidence that cholesterol is behind all this heart disease and stuff. Oh, absolutely not. Most of the, most of the heart disease started with the uh, after World War One when the uh, war ended, and they no longer had any market for it. And they were, uh, the manufacturers were stuck with tons of chlorine, and they finally put it in the uh, uh, drinking water. They claimed it would uh, purify the drinking water. Of course, that's when everybody started having heart attacks. Men started falling over like crazy in 1920 uh, with uh, heart attacks, and uh, they couldn't figure from out from chlorine. Out. Yeah, from chlorine. Well, chlorine is a very dangerous poison. You shouldn't use any chlorine on your house at all. It's a, it's used generally as a disinfectant. They use it in all the hospitals, of course. And some of the, the, uh, chlorine, uh, derivatives that they're using in the hospitals have been, uh, proven to be, uh, very dangerous and have been banned. Well, and, and, and you, you know as well as I do that I, I've turned the tap on in some cities in America. I'll give you a good example. Uh, uh, in, in New York City or even in, in, in San Francisco and Los Angeles, you can smell chlorine coming out of the tap. Oh, yes. It's everywhere. Because so, you use so it for everything, an all-purpose uh, medication. Jesus. Well, you know, and he, here's the other question I got for you. You know, you, you know as well as I do, if, if, if they started, I'll tell you something, if they started putting me on mainstream television, uh, as a as a uh, spokesperson for the facts, um, if I were anyone else around me, I would immediately be suspicious of the things I say because the mainstream media would never put someone on if they were not controlled or if they didn't want their message to to be controlled. Am I correct in that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a dead giveaway when a person starts appearing on national television, like Billy Graham or Pat Robertson, the the biggest phonies in the country. Because right away you know that they, uh, that they own them and they've bought them, and uh, you can't believe one word they say. Yeah, and 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 I've no.